What's up y'all? So for the main material of this project, I'm using 3 quarters of an inch oak veneer plywood. I began by breaking down the sheets of plywood into smaller pieces using my track saw. And while I'm doing this, I just want to mention that the second half of this video is coming out next Friday. So you're going to want to subscribe to go check that out. Also, anyone who subscribes to my channel is, uh, is automatically like the raddest, so you want to do that. I then cut the sections to size on my table saw. I have more accurate plans and measurements available on my website very soon, so I'll link the description down below. On the two side sections, I marked out a 3 quarter of an inch channel, which is the thickness of the material, to allow for the bottom, middle and back sections to sit in. I then set up the dado blade on my table saw to 3 quarters of an inch, and then remove the material out of those channels. I also marked out a removed material for the front and back top rails and a section for the solid white oak piece to sit in which sits in behind the door. As these were kind of awkward to remove on my dado blade, I removed them by hand using my pulse saw. I then lightly removed any pencil marks using my orbital sander. I cut the front and back rails out of two 4 inch offcuts. Once all the pieces were cut, it's time to assemble the cabinet. To ensure it sits flat and flush, I shimmed the underside and then wood glued and pinned it temporarily into place. And as this cabinet sits wall to wall, I used wood screws to hold it permanently into position. I glued and screwed each section together, making sure that it's flush and square. I also make sure that the drawer openings are at an equal distance while I screw the cabinet together. Overnight I clamped the cabinet so it sits nice and square and then the next day I removed the clamps and began with the edge banded. Because the plywood grain is all open and exposed, I had to cover it up using solid white oak edge banding. I roughly measured how much I need and then I picked through my scrap pile for a piece of white oak. I set the guide on my table saw to a quarter of an inch off the blade and then ripped the piece of white oak into quarter inch strips. I then rip those quarter inch strips to 5 sixteenths of an inch. I then finally sanded those strips into quarter of an inch in thickness. To attach the wide out strips to the face of the cabinet, I'm using a mixture of wood glue, pins and painter's tape. I applied a bead of glue along the grain of the plywood and then pinned the strip into place and then held it down until it dried using painter's tape. Music 
While those dried, I then worked on the solid piece of white oak which sits behind the face of the drawer. I got another piece of white oak from my scrap pile and then cut and sanded it to 1 inch by 2 inch in thickness. And at this point, I got pretty tired of watching the sander. I glued the solid strip to the face of the cabinet using wood glue and then clamped it until the glue dried, making sure it sits flush with the drawer dividers. I added a couple of screws either end to permanently hold it into place, seeing as it's going to be covered by the walls. I patched it in a little mistake that I made, <clears throat> yes I am not perfect, and let the glue dry overnight. The next day I removed all the tape and then gave all the edges a good sand until they were nice and flush. Now it's time to make the drawers. I measured the width, height and depth of the two drawers and then cut a bunch of 6 inch strips out of the remainder of the plywood. I set up the quarter inch wide blade out of my dado stack in my table saw and then cut a quarter inch channel half an inch up from the bottom of those six inch strips. Quarter of an inch deep. This is to allow for the quarter inch plywood which acts as the bottom of the drawer. I then cut the drawers to width and depth on my miter saw making sure that they're half an inch shorter than the width and half an inch shorter than the depth of the opening. Once those were cut, I cut the quarter inch plywood which is for the bottom of the drawer. I assembled the drawers using wood glue and my brad nailer. I put wood glue into the quarter inch grooves and then placed the bottom of the drawer into the grooves. I then glued the sides and the back of the drawer and then pinned the whole thing together. I cleaned up any excess wood glue using a damp cloth. On the drawers to hide the plywood grain I used iron on edge tape. I then cleaned up the edge tape using a knife and sandpaper, removing any sharp edges. To attach the hardware, which I will link down below, I made a line halfway up from the bottom of the drawer. I then screwed in the hardware along that line flush with the front of the drawer. I repeated these steps on both sides on both of the drawers. I attached the slides to the cabinet the exact same way, but I made a little block to help me hold the guides into place, making sure that the drawer sits half an inch higher than the cabinet. This will allow for clearance. Once the drawers were complete, I mixed up some wood filler using sawdust and wood glue, and then I filled in all the little pinholes and little marks that needed filling. To attach the cabinet to the wall, I needed to add some braces to the back, so I attached them using wood glue and screws. While the filler was drying, I made a start on the drawer front. I jointed a wide piece of white oak flat on my jointer.
and then brought it down to one inch in thickness using my planer. Once I was happy with the thickness, I then cut it to width with a 30 degree angle on the top face. The angle is to help open the drawer without putting any hardware on. This just gives it that seamless modern look. I then removed any sharp edges by hand using sandpaper. I measured and cut the draw front to length using my miter saw. I held the draw front into position using a couple of blocks and then shimmed it leaving equal gaps using cards. Before I cut the drawer in half, I then pre-drilled and marked where the drawers are going to be permanently fixed in position. I then cut the drawer front in half and then attached the drawer front to the drawers, making sure I'm happy how they're sitting. Once I was happy, it was time to take the cabinet apart ready for sanding and finish. I sanded the whole thing to 180 grit using my orbital sander. And then removed any sharp edges by hand. For the finish, I'm using Osmo Oil Poly X. I applied the oil on all the parts using a white pad. and then buffed off the excess using a blue shop towel. I repeated this process three times, allowing eight hours to dry in between each coat. Once that had fully dried, it was time to install the cabinet. I placed two blocks on the floor here and here, and two cleats on the wall which sit level and hold the cabinet to the height that I want. After about five minutes of struggling, I managed to shimmy the cabinet into position. I shimmed and leveled the cabinet so it sits nice and flush and level with an equal gap either side. I then fixed the cabinet into the wall through the drywall into the studs. Making sure it sits level and plumb. I then covered up the plumbing using a quarter inch piece of plywood with the holes cut out to allow for the plumbing to come through and then placed in the drawers. I then attached the drawer fronts permanently, screwing through the drawers using the pre-drilled holes that I made previously, using an inch and a quarter screw. And then once the draw fronts are on and adjusted, this part of the project is complete. I'm extremely happy how this cabinet turned out, especially after the countertops were installed and the bathroom was decorated. If you're interested in seeing how I built and installed the top half of the cabinet, you should subscribe to find out when that comes out. It's actually coming out next Friday, but it'd be cool if you subscribed anyway. <laughs>